Falcon player, multi-sync, what is it? How does it work? That's what we're going over today. I'm Charlie, and this is an FPP short. Falcon player has a really cool feature that lets you connect multiple controllers together, have them all sync with very minimal network congestion. Multi-sync will work with any BeagleBone based controller. This is the BeagleBone Black, the Cult, the Wallies, but then any Pi based controller. This is a Microsive M4. Below it is a Raspberry Pi. There's a few different types of hats out there that run off Raspberry Pis. But the similar thing between all of these is that they run Falcon Player below the Pixel Cape on the single board computer. Multisync works by essentially sending a timing packet out or broadcasting a timing packet that your other controllers that have the same sequence name will start to play once it sees that the master or the player is actually playing that song. They'll get that timing packet and sync up with them. Multisync works by having a show player and then a remote player. The easiest way for me to visualize this is looking at an orchestra. You have your conductor, which is the player or master controller, and then you have your orchestra or the band members, and they would be more like your other controllers out in your yard on the other side of your garage. Multisync is super easy to set up, and a lot of it starts inside of X lights. So let's get going into there and I will show you how I do it. Here we are inside of X lights and this is actually my main show folder here. I have a few different FPP based controllers here. Actually, all of them are. I have a couple of CULP controllers, my K16, K32, K8. This FPP zero controller is a Pi zero that runs a virtual matrix for my tune tune sign and uh, tells people to go to my website so they can pick a song through Remote Falcon. I got my Top Hat controller, that's another FPP based uh, two port Pi Zero, and I got my Microside M8. Setting these up is the same as you would set up any other controller inside of X Lights. So the magic sauce inside of X Lights when you set up your controller for multi sync, if you have FPP based controllers like your Culp or your Wallies or your Microsibes is that you actually set the active status to X lights only. I have been doing this wrong for a while and when I was doing research for this video I figured this out and this might solve an issue I may have been having. So once we get all our controllers set up the next thing that we need to do is upload a sequence obviously. So we're going to go under tools FPP connect if you have a couple sequences ready to go or a test sequence or something like that, this is where how you would upload them. Here I have a bunch of sequences down here. I'm just gonna upload this quick little test one. And then I wanna pick the controllers I wanna upload to. This is pretty standard for FPP Connect stuff. If all you use is FPP based controllers, we aren't talking your Falcon or your Holiday Coral controllers here. We're talking straight FPP based controllers that either have a Raspberry Pi, a BeagleBone, or another single board computer actually driving it, and you're running an FPP OS on that single board computer. This is kind of how you want to set it up. Your FSEQ type for all of your remotes are going to be V2 sparse. Once again, it's like an orchestra and a band, the band members, they don't need to know how the trumpet plays if it plays a cello. They don't need to know what each other's doing. Where I have my master here, that's gonna get the full fat V2 version of it. And it's the conductor, it needs to know everything going on in the show and keep the beat. Media, you don't necessarily have to upload media out to your remotes. I like to do it, I have some bigger SD cards in there, so I don't mind. But you do need to upload media to your master. For models, I like to upload local models to all my remotes, and then once again, the master gets all models, so it needs to know everything going on. If you are sheerly using FPP-based controllers here, you're running a single board computer with FPP as the operating system on it. For UDP out, you can leave that to none across the board. You don't need to worry about that with multicast. If you have something like a Falcon controller or something like that, you want to switch this to all. For my setup at least, I can leave it to none. Make sure you select your pixel hats or capes that are running off of that controller and click upload when you are ready to go. FPP connect is done, so now we're gonna hop into our master controller. Here I am in my master. This looks pretty standard. There's kind of one key to this player remote and down towards the bottom of any page inside a Falcon player, you're gonna see this FPP mode button here. If you click on this, you can toggle between a remote 
or a player. A player will essentially not multi-sync off of other controllers, where the remote will rely on the player to tell it what sequence to play and when. Real quick, I'm going to show a couple of things. We're going to go to channel outputs under the input output setup menu here. If you notice, I have all my controllers here, but none of them are selected to be active. Kind of the only key here for multi-sync is to click enable output. If you had a controller that took E131 data or streaming DDP data, you would want to make sure that, that is active here. Something like a WLED controller or a Hinx Pix or even a Falcon controller. Since all of mine are FPP based, I don't need any of these active. Source interface, since I run a Raspberry Pi, I have wireless and I have hardwire networking. I run my Master Pi into a Wi-Fi router directly, so it's hardwired, so I want to select the ETH0. If for some reason you run a completely Wi-Fi show, you would want to use the WLAN0 if you're using your master wirelessly to connect out to other controllers but most of us are gonna want this ETH0 option. So between enable outputs and source interface, just make sure that you got those set. Hit save, it's gonna ask you to restart FPPD. We'll do that real quick. Now under status control, we wanna to go to multi-sync. And on this screen, we will see kind of all the controllers currently on my network. This is not necessarily the controllers that are set up in the outputs tab. These are all the active controllers on my network. So if your controller is not plugged in to the wall or having network issues, it's just not going to show up here right now. But this is a great way to see kind of all the IP addresses you got going and whatnot. And kind of just scrolling left to right, we got our host name, the IP addresses that they're on, what type of platform it is, whether it's a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone, the mode that it's in, whether it's remote, whether it's a player or a player with multi-sync, the status. If it was playing a song right now, it would actually show what the status is. We can show that real quick. Let's go to our test and play that. We'll hop back under status control and multi-sync. And you kind of see all this updated. It's saying what sequence is playing here, the time that it's at. We have our versions of all of them. And then some more basic data about the operating system and the hardware itself. So now this is where you need to pay attention because this is how you set up multi-sync. Under settings in the lower left-hand corner on the multi-sync page, you're going to want to click on that. And you need to make sure two checkboxes are selected. You're going to have send multi-sync packets. This is going to tell your master to actually send out multi-sync packets across the network. The other ones that you need is one of these two. Send multi-sync to all remotes via multicast or send multi-sync to all remotes via broadcast. In most cases, I would select broadcast. Depending on your network hardware, you might not be able to broadcast across the network, and that's where you would want to go to the multicast option above it. End of the day, you need one of these two selected. Without that, you will not send out multi-sync packets to all of your remotes. So I usually stick with broadcast, so I'm going to leave it there. If you made any changes, it should ask you to restart FPPD again. Make sure to do that. And once you have these selected, you are good to start talking to other controllers through multi-sync. A lot of this information down here is not needed for the traditional network using multicast. Sometimes you might need to put in a unicast discovery IP to find a controller. But in my experience with FPP 5.5, FPP 6, you don't really have to mess with that much. Depend on your network, your mileage may vary. So at this point, we have our master all set up and now we can hop over to a remote. Or if it's not set up as a remote yet, this is how this is how we're going to do it. Or if it's not set up as a remote yet, that's what we're going to do now. Find one of your other controllers here. You can click on the IP address. It'll open a new tab to that controller. Here I am in my K16 here. And first thing we want to do is we want to set this to remote mode. This one currently is. As you see, it looks a little different than the master or the player. At the bottom of any page inside of FPP for that controller, just click FPP mode and then click on remote. That'll do a quick restart of FPPD and get it into remote mode. Then you should be greeted with a page that looks kind of like this. We'll go over this data here in a little bit. At this point, I want to show you what I've been doing wrong for a while. And under channel input, since I'm on my remote, I've always thought that I needed this enable input set even for multi-sync, which actually you don't. So where it says enable input here under your channel inputs page, 
actually disable the inputs. This will make sure that it doesn't take in any DDP data or anything like that, and it's relying sheerly on multi-sync to be in unison with your master. Since we use FPP Connect to upload the sequences, biggest trick is just making sure that your sequences have the exact same name as the sequence on the master. That is how it will know which sequence to play. And then once again, multi-sync will send out a timing packet saying, hey, I'm playing this song. Here's the time I'm at sync up to this. At this point, I'm going to hop back into my master and I'm going to start playing that test. And I'm going to hop back to my K16. We're going to hop back to the main status page. And if you see here, now it has remote status of syncing to player. Here's where it's at in the sequence time. Here's the IP address of the master. We have the sequence name. If there's a media file that went with it, that would be here as well. Now here, this data sequence sync, you'll see that it's synced two times now with the master, two sequences. 80 sync packets have gone through, 85. And at this point, we can kind of just watch the sync packets tick up. If you aren't seeing any changes down here and you have data up here that's saying that it's syncing, could be that your live update stats is unchecked. Maybe just check that Well, it's playing to check it out, make sure it's working. We have multi-sync working now. So what is multi-sync good for? Well, it's really good, especially if you're running your entire show off your home network. You don't have a dedicated network. It'll help keep some of that network congestion down. Instead of streaming data like E131 data, it's just using a timing packet that's being broadcasted out. One packet, all of your controllers will pick it up and say, hey, this is what's playing. This is where I'm at. This is a great solution for Wi-Fi shows. I have a controller on the other side of my garage I use Wi-Fi with. With multi-sync, I get almost zero stuttering. I do see a little bit here and there off Wi-Fi, but no one out watching my show will ever notice. So that's multi-sync. If you got any questions, let me know down in the comments. If you learned something today, give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to FPP Shorts for more tips, tricks, and tutorials.